and we're back. Um, sorry for that little pause. Hopefully I'll be able to connect those two videos in the future. Um, if not, I'll just have to post two. So we did find our Y component of that velocity and our X component. So the reason why we have to do this is because in the Y direction, our velocity is changing because there is an acceleration. In the X direction, there is no acceleration, so it's a constant velocity. So here, this is basically your lab, so this is a good review of that. And we're looking for, uh, this is setting it up for you. So right now we're looking at the Y, oops, sorry, Y direction information, because we're looking to see how far the ball, how long the ball is in the air for. And it's basically like if you just throw the ball up at our 19.2 meters per second, how long is it going to take to go up and come back down? Essentially, our first part of our lab. So there's different ways about doing this. Um, we can look at, you know, just going from the bottom to the top and then doubling that time. Or we can go, you know, bottom to top and then back down. So that's the way I'm going to do this one. So um, we know our initial velocity in the y direction is positive because it's up. And we actually know our final velocity in the y direction. It's going to be that same velocity just downward. Because whatever velocity it loses on the way up, it gains back down because the acceleration is constant at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So since I have my two velocities, my acceleration, I'm looking for time. I can use, right, that's what we're looking for, right? This equation here. Where my VF I don't know why I like putting parentheses around that. So this is where the negatives definitely come into play because of moving values on other either side of the um, equal sign. Checking my answers here. And I get about 3.9 seconds. And again, there are other ways you can go through, just looking at the way up or the way down and doubling that time. Feel free to do that as well. So I have my time. I now can look just in the x direction, which that's a little bit easier in my opinion. I was given, or no, I calculated that velocity as 16 times my 3.9. Plug that in and I can solve to get my delta x. Just know that if you do look on the school genius solutions, um, I believe those do use 10 meters per second squared for acceleration, and occasionally they will uh, round differently. For part D, we're looking for the maximum height of the ball. Again, there's different ways you can go about this. Um, you can look at it as you know, your initial velocity in the y direction was the 19.2. Now we can define our final velocity in the y direction as zero. We know the time it takes to go up and down, so we can cut that time in half if we wanted. So that's gonna be and we have some different ways we can go about it. So let's just go, hmm, what do I want to do? Let me go this way. All 
I have all of those values and I can just solve for my delta y. We don't need to do our two dimensional motion map. And three is actually a good problem. Is this the next worksheet? Sorry. I believe it is. Sorry, I think I skipped some pages here. Maybe I didn't. I think I skipped one of the pages here, sorry. Um, the one page I believe I skipped was uh, worksheet four, number one, which I posted a previous video on, which is okay. Uh, number two is very slimmer, similar. It's just downwards. I think you guys are okay handling that. So I'm going to go through this one for a specific reason. And then I think we should be good for the rest of the, the packets. Um, all right, so we have our building, our water balloon, and we have our horizontal distance. This is 24 meters. It's shot at 18 meters per second. So the little hint is it's not in the X or Y, so we will have to break that up into components. And what height will the balloon strike the building? It's a little bit different of a problem. So the first thing we know we can do, um, even if we had no direction, like as to how to solve the problem, is to figure out the components. So this is our VIY, our VX, and the 50 degrees. I'm going to go a little bit more of a shorthand notation here, just because of space. Oops. So VX, I'm going to go cosine VX over 18 meters per second. And that's going to be about 11. 6 meters per second, my VIY, I'm going to use sine Oops, backwards. And I'll get my VIY as So I have these two values here. Okay, so now what do I need to do? The trajectory of the ball is going to look, or the wood balloon is going to look something like this. So knowing how far it is, I can figure out how long of a time it's going to take to travel. So I'm going to use that horizontal information to figure out how long it takes to travel and then go in a y direction to figure out how high it is at that point. I'm going to plug those values in. I'm going to skip some steps here. Um, again, this is just to save some time on the video. Um, it would be expected that you do that to show understanding later. So you get about two seconds that it takes to travel. And then I can go to my Y direction to see if it has about two seconds to travel horizontally, how high will it be after that two seconds? Oh, 
And same thing as usual. And this time I will have um, times to put in, so I'm not going to take this value and, and ignore it. I plug in my VIY, my time of 2.1, plus my 1 half AT squared, which I have that acceleration time. And I get a height of about 6.9 meters. And again, I think that's using, I'm just kind of cheating and using the other solutions and not plugging in for the 9.8. Feel free to uh, adjust if you use 9.8. Now the real question becomes, if the balloon misses or shoots over the building, how far will the balloon land from its launch location? Oh, sorry, that was a different question. Um, okay. So this is assuming that the building isn't there. And the ball is going to go up and then come back down. So when the ball goes up and comes back down, what is its overall change in position? So if it's going to start here and comes back down, its delta y is 0. So this is the first time we've seen something like this. Um, and really, drawing the diagram is how you would see that as a start and a final position. So knowing that delta y is 0, our acceleration is negative 9.8. We still know our, uh, let's see, how far the balloon has gone. We're looking for um, This is my 13.8 from before. So just because I drew this kind of weird, that's all going to be my wide information, which be a little bit bigger. Okay, kind of organized here, disorganized rather. And again, same equation. And my delta y is zero. So the key with delta y being zero is that is going to allow me to not have to factor the quadratic. So my VIY was the 13.8 T plus my 1 half, and I apologize for the being unorganized, T squared. So one of my T's will cancel out in this case, and I can solve for my time. So then I can go back to my x direction information knowing that I know my time that I just found and my horizontal 11.6, I can find my horizontal displacement. So feel free to refer to um, Schoology. Really what I wanted to get to was part C. This is the balloon can launch, um, can be launched from less than 24 meters away from the building at the same speed and angle and still hit exactly the same height you calculate in part A, determine this second launch location. So what it's talking about is, here's our building. And here's our initial, um, let's look at this way. It's initially shot from here, right? Here's our ground. The ball can travel like this. That's actually really horrible. So it's striking the building on its way back down. Well, what if we bring where we launch it a little bit closer to the building? So say, purple, if it hit here. So it's referring to this height. So if we bring it close enough, 
and the ball shoots up, it will hit that same height on the way up. And this is where that, that factoring the quadratic comes into, into play, where since we were given the distance, um, Or sorry, in the beginning of the problem, we were looking at, we found the time and then came over and found, so we had the time and we were looking for the height. Well, if we were looking for the time from just the vertical information, we would have to factor that quadratic. So when you factor the quadratic, you get two times. Sometimes you'll get a positive time, sometimes you get a negative one. In this case, you're just going to get two times, just in the positive. Um, so the first time you're going to get is if you're closer. The second time you're going to get is if you're farther. So um, the one will be on the way up, and the one will be other one will be on the way down. So you're going to use again that equation where we're looking for that same vertical height, which was about 6.9 meters. And it was positive because it's, you know, we're launching from the ground. Our initial velocity in the y direction was 13.8 t plus 1 half as I run out of room. Sorry about all that. But I think you guys get the idea. So since we have our two t's, it is a full quadratic. You have to factor those, and you'll get two times. Um, so the time that we're looking at for on the way up is going to be around 0.66 seconds, because that's going to be on the way up. The, the, the longer time um, was the one from before, the 2.1 seconds. And then to figure out where we need to put our launcher, we just go back to our horizontal information. So hopefully that was good enough. Um, that pretty much walked, walks through every scenario that I can throw at you. Um, we will discuss more in class and then go through some more reviews. So this is really kind of a short unit after we jump into it, no pun intended. So if you have questions, feel free to school G message me and I will see you soon.